Good morning to all. Today's topic of discussion is the distinguishing features between a partnership firm and a company. I explain, I will explain this to you so that no doubt remains in the minds of the students as to how and what are the areas that distinguish these two kinds of uh, business units, a partnership firm and a, a company. First of all, a partnership is not a legal entity, while a company is a separate legal entity. Now it is important to know what, what is the meaning and value of being a legal entity. As we know that these are artificial units, they are not persons. But when we call any unit a legal entity, it means that we are impersonating that unit, that business unit. And it would mean that a partnership firm cannot sue, cannot take action in court in its own name or get sued in its own name because the firm itself is not a separate legal entity. But the partners can be sued and the partners and individuals as individuals can sue in the court but not in the name of the partnership firm. While in the case of a company, a company is a separate legal entity and one can proceed in court against a company directly as an entity, as the company itself being an entity and not through um, any action lies through its directors but the legal entity is sued directly in its name as well as the company can move the court against another person in its own name. So that is what we mean by being a legal entity or not being a legal entity. So a partnership firm is not a legal entity while a company is a separate legal entity. Then <coughs> every partner is agent of others. In a partnership firm, any given number of partners may be there, whether it is two or more number of partners are there in that firm. A person, a partner, when he acts, he acts on behalf of all. He becomes an agent of all the other partners, as well as he is also the principal in relation to other partners, because he can bind the other partners to his action as well the other partners can bind him through their actions. While in the case of a company, no member or shareholder of a company is an agent of the company. The shareholders act in their own capacity. They cannot bind other shareholders of the company. So their capacity is individual and they do not act as an agent or the principal of company or its shareholders. Then the liability in a partnership firm of a partner is unlimited. What do you understand by the term unlimited liability? That would mean that apart from the his official property that he has assigned to the firm, even his property in, that he holds in his personal capacity also becomes liable to meet the liabilities of the firm. So that is when we call the liability of partners is unlimited. Even his personal property, he personally becomes liable to pay the debts or meet the liabilities of the firm. However, in case of the shareholders or members of a company, the, limit, the liability of such shareholders is limited. It is limited to their share. Their liability is only limited to their share or to the unpaid holding of their share and no further. They are not personally liable. Their personal property is not liable to get attached for any liability that has to be met on behalf of the company. Hence, their liability is limited. Then a partnership firm gets dissolved on death, retirement or insolvency of any partner. It automatically gets dissolved. Why? Because the nature of the partnership, the relationship of the partnership undergoes a change as soon as a death of a partner occurs or any person, any partner retires or is declared as insolvent. He will have to move out of the partnership agreement and once the agreement does not remain in its original form, 
we say that the partnership firm gets dissolved. While in case of a company, a company does not get dissolved if any shareholder dies or if any of them are uh, declared insolvent or they retire. It is not necessary that a company will get dissolved. A company will continue to exist in perpetuity. <coughs> Can be a partnership firm can be constituted with minimum two members. While in case of a company, minimum two shareholders are required for a private company, whereas minimum seven shareholders are required for a public company. Then the maximum limit for the number of partners to remain in a firm is ten persons. For, all, for a firm conducting banking business and 20 persons for firms that are conducting other than banking businesses. However, in case of a company, a private company can have a maximum number of 50 shareholders and a public company and for in the case of a public company, there is no limit on the maximum number of shareholders. A a public company can have any number of shareholders. There is no limit, no capital limit at all. Then, it is not compulsory to get, for a partnership firm, it is not compulsory to get its accounts audited and certified by a chartered accountant annually. This is not compulsory, it is totally optional. It is upon the will of the partnership firm if they want to get their accounts audited and certified by a chartered accountant or not and at what period they want to do it, it is totally at their will and it is optional. However, in case of a company, it is compulsory, it is mandatory for companies to get their accounts audited and certified by chartered accountants annually and they must also get it published for public knowledge. Then, registration is optional in case of partnership firms. It is not compulsory. A partnership firm can exist even if it is unregistered. However, an unregistered firm suffers certain disadvantages and they are like, they cannot go to the court to take action for any right that arises under the Partnership Act or any right that arises under the partnership contract that they have entered into, the partnership deed that they have entered into. So it is always advantageous to get your partnership firm registered. And commonly the partnership firms opt for registration. However, it is not compulsory in their case. But in the case of companies, registration is compulsory and every company must get itself registered under the Companies Act and with the registrar of their state. So these are the main distinguishing features between the partnership firms 